Greetings and salutations, young true believers. So today, I want to talk to you about Karl Popper and the demarcation criterion. So demarcation criterion is a debate concerning what differentiates, if anything, science, and particularly uh, the natural sciences, from every other aspect of human cultural endeavor. And um, today, in 2020, uh, this debate is not as important as it once was, say, 100 years ago, right? Uh, when, there was, when everyone was, was really keen to know uh, what exactly separated science from everything else. Uh, these days, most people, most philosophers, that is, don't think that there is anything that separates science from uh, non-science. It's just a matter of you know, different ways of doing empirical. Uh, the issue comes down to different ways of doing empirical inquiry. But about 20 years ago, or, or excuse me, 100, 110 years ago, right, Karl Popper, uh, young student in Austria, uh, he, like a lot of Austrians at the time, was really taken with the work of Sigmund Freud. Uh, and doubts began to creep into Popper's mind, right? Freud seemed to have an answer for everything, right? There was never any case that he saw that he couldn't instantly diagnose and and explain in terms of his theory of sexual repression and ego id super ego etc so this is what made popper begin to wonder and he began to examine other theories in this light right the personal psychology of uh carl jaspers um the marxist uh theories of histories which are allegedly they were alleged to be scientific right and what all of these theories had in in common other than a claim to being scientific right was that they explained so much there was nothing that ever fell outside of their purview there was nothing that the theoreticians uh you know uh the the marxists the the, the freudians etc there was nothing that they couldn't explain in the light of their theory right and this began uh Popper's research into the demarcation criterion, and he he finally stumbled upon it. What he thinks is the the demarcation criterion, and he, it, it, his thought is thus: if no evidence can count against a theory, if a theory can explain everything, right? If a theory could not be falsified, in short, even in principle, then that's a pretty good indication that you're dealing with something that is not, in fact, scientific. Right. Um, Popper's favorite example of a scientific theory that passes muster and by passes muster. What what Popper wants to suggest is that uh, the theory lives to fight another day. So that that's his way of explaining it. Right. Uh, it's not that any theory is in principle uh, ever immune to being re repealed or, or, or falsified. It's just the good theories are the ones that endure and continue to fight. One such good theory is uh, Einstein's relativity theory. And Einstein proved the uh, merits of his theory by using his calculations from his relativity hypothesis to uh, uh, estimate the exact day of a future uh, eclipse based on, uh, based on his theory. And it, indeed, uh, the eclipse came to pass when... Einstein's theory uh, predicted it would, right? So this is an example of a theory that can make predictions that uh, takes into account evidence that does not uh, try to explain every single phenomenon by its lights, but rather limits itself to a certain group of phenomena, which it in fact makes it explains very well. And again, it, it uh, the practitioner the, or the, the adherence to the theory are able to make predictions based upon this theory and the tenets of this theory. So again, if a theory cannot be falsified, that's good reason, uh, not even falsified in principle, that's good reason to suspect that you're not dealing with a legitimate scientific theory. Um, so again, this, this debate is not as important as it was 100 years ago when it was raging, right? 
Um, but still, you know, many scientists you talk to will tell you that they think there is a difference between science and non-science. Um, again, you know, we talked about aesthetic cognitivism uh, a couple of modules back. Uh, I don't think that the natural sciences are the only way to access reality. But again, you should know this debate has been is uh, historically important. And Karl Popper is one of the few philosophers that professional scientists respect and will even reference by name. So uh, for those of you in the sciences, and I remember there were a lot of you, don't be surprised if you see his name pop up again from time to time uh, in the debates in your discipline.